the San Antonio. Stephen Cabasos has a look at the damage left behind. As the vaccine rollout continues, some folks are wondering about getting their second doses. We have some answers for you this noon. The sun is back out today, but we're going to see the clouds fill back in over the weekend. Some rain chances, too. We'll fill you in on your weekend forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A driver burned beyond recognition in a deadly crash that happened just south of San Antonio last night. The scene unfolded on I-37 North and 1604 East. San Antonio police say an 18-wheeler had gone off the overpass before bursting into flames. Stephen Cavazos was there as crews were working to clear what was left of that deadly scene. Crews have been working throughout the night and into the early hours of this morning, working to clear the scene. And now that the sun is up, we're getting a closer look at some of the damage that's been left behind over here on I-37 going north into San Antonio. We can see a down guardrail and further down below here on 1604 East, another down guardrail. Now, according to San Antonio police, the driver of an 18 wheeler was heading northbound on I-37 before launching off that overpass and onto the center lane of East 1604. It was a daunting task for these crews working through dark and wet conditions as they cleared debris of a fiery crash that has left one person dead. This part of 1604 blocked off by several road flares, which stayed on throughout the night until the sun came up Friday morning. According to San Antonio police, the driver of an 18 wheeler was heading northbound on I-37. The semi was carrying a trailer. Police say inside that trailer was molasses. It was sometime before 10 Thursday night when the driver went off the overpass. Police say the semi truck crossed paths with a van which was heading westbound on 1604. The semi went into the embankment under the overpass before bursting into flames. Molasses from the trailer spilling onto the roadways, burnt beyond recognition, was how San Antonio police described the driver of that semi, who was pronounced dead on the scene. Two people who were in the van were rushed to a nearby hospital, but only suffered minor injuries. Now, it's still not clear what caused that driver to drive off the overpass and onto the center lane here of 1604. The identity of that driver has not been released. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police still working to solve a couple of overnight robberies. The first on the north side in the 3100 block of Blanco Road. Police say two male suspects walked into the J&A grocery store and robbed them at gunpoint. This was just before 1130 last night. Officers tell us they took off in a blue pickup truck with cash from the register. And just two miles away, about 15 minutes later, another robbery in the 1300 block of Gardena Street. Officers say in this case, a pair of suspects robbed a Sitco convenience store at gunpoint. At some point, one of the suspects fired three shots at a wall before both people ran away. Police are investigating whether these two crimes are connected. A surge in coronavirus cases continuing here in Bexar County. Another 2,500 people now battling COVID-19. Our seven day average is a little above the 2000 mark. 17 more people have died after contracting the virus. During last night's briefing, we found out that there was a dip in the number of people in our hospitals. However, there are still more than 1400 COVID-19 patients. 426 are in the intensive care unit and 255 patients are on ventilators. Texas still in phase 1B of the vaccine rollout, but that does include quite a few people. There's good news for those looking to make new appointments. The WellMed vaccination hotline will reopen next week. WellMed says they expect the next shipment of COVID-19 vaccines on January 30th. The hotline to make an appointment will be open next Saturday. Those who are eligible can call 833-968-1745. Starting January 30th, WellMed will be administering vaccines starting on Monday, February 1st. City officials say they don't know when the next shipment of vaccines is going to arrive at the Alamo Dome or the Wonderland of America's Mall. And while the vaccine rollout is well underway, there is still some confusion out there about the process. We've gotten a lot of questions from people who are wondering about getting that second dose. Yeah, we have reached out to several folks to find out where they can get those second dose. Four main public vaccine distribution sites in Bexar County. Not everyone has that second dose. If you do, the protocol depends on where and when you got your first shot. Now, if you got your vaccine at the Alamo Dome before January 13th, Metro Health will call you to schedule a second dose. If you missed the call from Metro Health, 
and you need to schedule that second dose, then dial 311 and select option 8, or you can email COVID-19 at sanantonio.gov. If you went to the Alamo Dome after January 13th, you should have had your second appointment scheduled on site. The other three major vaccine distribution sites include the two WellMed sites, the University Health Vaccine Clinic, a Wonderland of the Americas Mall, and all three sites tell us that patients will have their second shot appointment scheduled on site during their first appointments. Coming up, though, on Wednesday, we'll, we'll, we will be dedicating an hour to the COVID-19 vaccine. We're going to talk about the science behind them, how they were developed so quickly, and what they mean for the future. The vaccines ending the COVID-19 pandemic airs on January 27th right here on KSAT 12 at 7 p.m. You can catch it on KSAT.com as well as the KSAT TV app as well. And as always, we've got the latest on KSED.com. If you need any of this information, just go to the coronavirus section of our website. Meanwhile, across the country, the CDC predicting the U.S. death toll could rise to more than a half million by mid-February. As scientists continue to learn more about the new variants that are spreading across our country. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest on the Biden administration's efforts to fight the virus. Lining the sidewalks of sunny Los Angeles, blunt reminders of the dark reality there. These COVID signs warning people when they enter high-risk neighborhoods with rising COVID-19 deaths. The race to vaccinate more urgent than ever. At Dodger Stadium, the largest capacity vaccine site in the U.S., wait times for a shot reaching five hours. Once we're at full capacity, this site can comfortably help at least 12,000 people get vaccinated. 29 states now activating the National Guard to help speed things up, but frustration is growing with demand outweighing supply. In New York, more than 23,000 appointments were canceled. We need more vaccine and we need it now. Dr. Fauci telling CNN the Trump administration downplaying the virus may have had deadly consequences. When you start talking about things that make no sense medically and no sense scientifically, that clearly is not helpful. On his first full day on the job, President Joe Biden launching what he calls a full-scale wartime effort to fight the virus. 400,000 Americans have died. That's more than have died in all of World War II. This is a wartime undertaking. Biden using the Defense Production Act to order private companies to manufacture supplies like specialized syringes that allow healthcare workers to get an extra dose of vaccine out of Pfizer vials and directing FEMA to set up 100 federal vaccination centers nationwide with the goal of 100 million shots in his first 100 days. When we reach that goal and we're confident we will, we're going to build from there. Now there is some promising news on the vaccine front. Dr. Fauci says Johnson & Johnson could apply for emergency use authorization within the next few weeks for their single dose vaccine. And a board member for the company says they hope to produce up to 100 million doses for Americans by April. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Still coming up this half hour, the Antonian girls basketball team, one of the best in the state. Larry Mears will tell us what makes them so good this year. Code Up is expanding their program to reach more people during the pandemic. How the effort is helping to create more possibilities for some students. The Downtown Tech Boot Camp Hub is making changes to offer opportunities to people far beyond San Antonio. Code Up, now fully licensed to offer online classes across the state of Texas, and soon another set of courses will begin. Alicia Barrera visited their campus in South San Antonio and tells us about the impact the program has had on a recent graduate. Well, before the pandemic, students interested in tech were packing their bags and making their way here to San Antonio, to the Code Up campus, or also the new campus in Dallas. But now, due to the pandemic, they're able to take these courses from their home. Code Up CEO Jason Strawn said the change has been a silver lining during the pandemic as it's opened up more possibilities for students in tech like Tommy Cirillo Thorpe. 
Tommy has a bachelor's in sociology, and after much thought, he made the decision to enroll in the full stock web development program at CODUP, a 22 week course. That was back in May of 2020, in a time where the world shut down and many were left without a job. Tommy was actually able to graduate from the program in November, offered an internship, and will be hired in a top ranking company. Thanks to our admissions team, they introduced me to um, a gentleman who works at this company called Cognizant. Uh, it's a Fortune 200 company. This last month, what we were hammering really hard is um, building an auction website. Um, so something similar to eBay. Strong says the future is in industries like tech or even medicine and hopes more people, especially those in underrepresented groups in tech, take advantage of the programs and scholarships offered at CODA. On KSAT.com, you'll find the full story as well as those dates for the next start of classes. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside, wow, what a difference. The sun is out, the temperatures are up. Gorgeous day. It's nice, and the numbers are rising. We're gonna be in the mid 70s this afternoon, guys. Maybe even close to 80 in some spots. Uh, it's going to be a nice spring like day. The aquifer is down a tenth of a foot, 665.2 in your pollen count. Man, uh, mold is uh, staying really high, 4,130. The mountain cedar jumped up today, too. It's at 1,680. So, not good in both respects. But we do have some rain chances on the way. It looks like maybe late Sunday night. It's a couple of thunderstorms, too. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. With everyone at home these days, your bathroom may be getting more use. I have a new toilet unclogging tool for you today. No more ugly plunger, no more plumber visits. The Toilet Saver is the fastest, most hygienic way to unclog a toilet, and it's very easy to use. This heavy-duty J-shaped design rakes all of the excess waste from the trapped area. It's light and easy to use, just 8.6 ounces, and it unclogs the toilet fast. It's as simple as rake, poke, flush. First, rake all the excess waste away from the waste trap to clear the way. Finish using the other side of the toilet saver to poke through the remaining clog to clear, flush, clean, and disinfect the tool. Now the retail price, $45. The case at deals price, $34.99. That's a 23% discount. Just head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more. Did he say almost 80 degrees? Is that what I heard him say? Yeah. I was listening. We'll take it. Close. You know, the only problem is that oh. despite having a cloudy, rainy week, mm -hmm. we didn't really get any rain. Not enough. No. Not enough. It didn't add up to very much. We had a little bit this morning, too, guys, uh, but it was like 500ths of an inch at most. Some places south of San Antonio did see that. We need some more hardy rain. I don't know that we're going to get it this weekend. There are some chances, and we'll show you that here in just a second. Looking at the time lapse, few drops this morning. It was a nice sunrise. We had some clouds and now those clouds are really starting to thin out. 71 at the airport. Calm winds. Dew point is at 58. So it's still somewhat humid. It's not really all that bad though. 68 degrees. Bernie stage 76. Lotus 75 and warming in Hondo. 73 Castroville and 68 down there at Stinson. Bigger picture here. 68 Kennedy 67 Gonzalez. Really pretty pleasant just about anywhere you go across South Texas this afternoon. Dew points as we mentioned 50s and 60s. So we're still on the pleasant to, to muggy line there. Now that we will get some drier air moving in this evening with a frontal boundary. Not super dry, but it will dry us out uh, probably into the low 50s tonight. And then the dew points come right back up, especially as we get in Sunday. Sunday's going to be a humid day as moisture surges back into our area. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture. Quite a bit of cloud cover this morning. Most of that now is uh, moving east. Still uh, quite a bit of cloud cover around Gonzales, but everybody else is seeing mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. And I expect that's what we'll see throughout the rest of this afternoon and this evening. You notice this cloud deck here, though, that's low cloudiness, and it's right along a frontal boundary which uh, stretches across Texas. So we're on the warm side of things here where temperatures are pretty toasty. It's much cooler as you get up towards Dallas and especially the Texas Panhandle underneath this cloud deck. 53 right now in Waco, 48 in Abilene. It's 34 in Amarillo. So it shows you the difference there. And yes, this front will move through, but it's not going to turn bitterly cold uh, tonight or tomorrow, but it will be cooler, especially with clouds around tomorrow probably uh, staying in the 60s, low to mid 60s tomorrow. 
Uh, there's the last system that's moving away. We've got our new one out here around San Francisco, and this is the one that's going to bring us some rain chances on Sunday. Now, it doesn't move right over top of us. It's going to move to our north, so our rain chances aren't great, but they are there. Here's how the forecast looks. That initial front moves through. Clouds return by tomorrow morning. It's going to be a cloudy weekend for sure. Saturday, cloudy all day long. We may start to see a few showers late in the day. This is around 6 o'clock. Maybe some drizzle, a few sprinkles. This front moves north as a warm front, so Sunday it warms up. Still not a lot of substantial rain. This is around 5 o'clock, so it's not like it's going gonna, it's gonna to rain all weekend. In fact, I, I think our best rain chance is going to be Sunday night the, into early Monday morning. This is around 2 a.m. Monday. Some showers and storms right along the front, but I mentioned we're on the tail end of things, so our rain chances are probably only about 30%. And then by Monday morning, we're clearing out, and we're going to look at some pretty nice weather next week. Forecast for today, up around 76, mostly sunny, and then clouds fill in tonight, and then cloudy on your Saturday. 65, 76 on Sunday. We'll see some morning drizzle, and then just cloudy skies, and then that chance of storms late Sunday night into uh, early Monday, but mostly sunny Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday temperatures in the 70s. Again, we're still in sort of a spring like pattern here, uh, looking more and more like we're saying goodbye to winter. Can't guarantee that. Yeah, we still got February to get through, but this is a warm forecast. Looks like we're in spring. Thank you. You know, in years past, the Spurs would actually dominate at home. No team would come in here and feel comfortable. The Spurs always won. I mean, there's times when they lost, what, two, three games? Yeah, well, this year. Pop recently said he doesn't really think there's much of a home court advantage these days, so we'll get to see that tonight when the Spurs host the Dallas Mavericks. San Antonio is just two and four at home this season, but DeMar and the guys are certainly happy to be back, and Dallas knows that this is a key contest. We'll explain coming up. It's, it's pretty even, Steven. You know, I've always, I've, I think I've mentioned that to you guys before. I, uh, there's not much of a, a home court advantage, I don't think. Pop and the Spurs are just two and four at home this season in big board sports. DeMar DeRozan and the Spurs will host the Dallas Mavericks tonight in the key Southwest showdown. DeMar got into foul trouble Wednesday at Golden State during the Spurs' 121-99 loss. He picked up three fouls in the first six minutes. Now, tonight is the start of a nice stretch for the Spurs with nine of their next 11 games at home. Um, very different, Brent, being on the road um, with all the protocols, um, at least being at home in the comfort around, you know, your loved ones, um, your bed, um, you know, definitely – Definitely um, it's something that's beneficial. You know, we, we wish we had our fans, but, you know, as long as you got your bed to land, um, that's just as good. Luka Doncic and the Mavs come to town after beating the Pacers Wednesday night, 124-112, to snap a three-game slide. And Luka is a bad dude. He has five triple-doubles on the season, tying him for the NBA lead. He's 10th in scoring at 26.1 and second in assists with nine and a half per game. Now, more importantly, this is a key Southwest contest. San Antonio is sent second behind Memphis, while Dallas is currently in third place. The, there is meaning to... Um, having the best record in your division and having a good divisional record because it it's criteria for tiebreakers and stuff like that. When you look at the standings right now in the West <clears throat> and how, how tight it is from top to bottom, um, you know, tiebreakers are going to be extremely important, you know, come playoff time and come, you know, when, when teams are getting ready for the playing games and all that kind of stuff. Here's the matchup, 7.30 tonight, and the Mavs are favored by two. In girls' high school basketball, the Antonian Lady Apaches are having a wonderful regular season, which is winding down. Led by head coach Patrick Harvey, the Lady Apaches are 14-3 and state-ranked number two in 6A private schools by the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. They expected to have a great season. Well, we returned all five starters, so we expected to be pretty competitive. And then adding uh, uh, Carly to the to the mix certainly helped out a little bit. Coming in and being part of a team that was already good, um, I wanted to come in and be a leader uh, as I tried to be at O'Connor. So um, coming in here and just leading and taking a role that I knew they needed me to play uh, was a big deal. I think that like we worked really hard 
like to get to second in state. Um, we have like energy. We want to make it to the state championship. I want to get a ring my senior year. So being ranked second like gives us more um, motivation to keep going. And Tony is scheduled to play at Incarnate Word tonight at 630 to open district play. And some sad news to pass on. The great Hank Aaron has passed away at the age of 86. The Atlanta Braves, Aaron's longtime team, said he died peacefully in his sleep. No cause was given. Back in April 1974, he broke the Babe's mark of 714 home runs by hitting 715. The Hall of Famer finished his career with 755, a total surpassed by Barry Bonds in 2007. Highlights you always love to see. Absolutely. Awesome stuff. Beautiful. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Hey, after unveiling a national strategy to combat the pandemic, President Biden now turns to the economic crisis it brought. Coming up in the next half hour, what executive orders President Biden has planned to address the economy? Federal authorities are continuing to charge rioters who stormed the Capitol steps. Now the FBI and ATF have increased the reward to $75,000 for information leading to the arrest of at least one of those who took part in this chaos. Details still ahead. And new today at five, we know the airlines took a big hit as a result of the pandemic. Now experts are predicting a big surge of airline travelers in the summer. So what will flying look like today at five after entertainment tonight? Federal investigators continuing their pursuit of that violent mob who stormed the Capitol just a couple of weeks ago. And while law enforcement searches for those who took part in the siege, lawmakers are prepping for the Senate impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. A nationwide manhunt continues. Federal authorities are still aggressively tracking down those who took part in the January 6th insurrection, charging rioters who took part in the deadly siege on Capitol Hill. As for those suspected pro-Trump domestic terrorists who have been caught, cuffed and charged, some judges delivering stern rebukes. The Justice Department filing its first major conspiracy charges connected to the insurrection. Thomas Caldwell, who prosecutors describe as a commander with the far-right militia group Oath Keepers, is accused of organizing this squad of up to 10 members for their role in the assault on the Capitol. Oh, and Patrick McCaughey of Connecticut remains in custody after being arrested following a tip from a childhood friend. Also being held, William Calhoun, who allegedly bragged on social media about kicking down the door to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office, part of an angry mob which he said would have torn her into pieces. In denying bail to Calhoun, who is an attorney, the Georgia judge described him as a threat, a man whose mind has been poisoned and who has no respect for the laws of the United States. Then there's Riley Williams, the woman accused of stealing Pelosi's laptop with the intention of selling it to Russian spies. A Pennsylvania judge releasing her to house arrest as as her case plays out in court. As she left the courtroom, the judge telling Williams, you are being released today because the Constitution has prevailed. Even as the arrests of those involved in the Capitol insurrection grow, one key suspect remains at large. The person pictured in this photo is believed to have planted those two pipe bombs at the nearby Democratic and Republican headquarters. The FBI and ATF bumping the reward up to $75,000 for any information about who's responsible. Elsewhere on Capitol Hill, the Senate impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump looms large. Republicans pushing to delay the trial for at least two more weeks, saying Trump's new lawyer needs more time to prepare. But make no mistake, a trial will be held in the United States Senate. And newly minted Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says House Speaker Nancy Pelosi plans to introduce that lone article of impeachment to the Senate on Monday by rule. That means the Senate impeachment trial would start on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Russia says it welcomes President Joe Biden's proposal on extending the nuclear treaty between the two countries. A spokesperson from the Russian government says the country stands for extending the pact and is waiting to see the details of the U.S. proposal. The treaty is set to expire on February 5th. President Biden has proposed to Russia a five-year extension of the New START treaty. The treaty was signed in 2010 and limits each country to no more than 1,550 deployed nuclear warheads. A West Point graduate and four-star retired Army General Lloyd J. Austin, now the Secretary of Defense. He was confirmed today by the Senate with a 93-2 vote. Austin becomes the first black Secretary of State. Since he has been retired from the military for less than seven years, he had to receive a waiver from the House and Senate in order to take over the role of leading the Pentagon. 
Austin took the lead in designing a strategy to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria. He spent 41 years serving in the Army. President Biden has a long list of goals for his first 100 days. Uh, Thursday, on his first full day in office, President Biden focused on the health crisis and the coronavirus pandemic, signing numerous executive actions. Today, more executive actions are coming from the president, this time focusing on the economic crisis that faces our country. CNN's Jeremy Diamond reports. After unveiling a national strategy to combat the pandemic, today President Biden turning to the economic crisis it has wrought. Biden will sign two more executive orders today, one to help people who are unemployed or struggling to buy food, the second to protect federal workers and contractors. This will set into motion a future executive order which will require federal contractors to pay a $15 minimum wage and provide emergency paid leave. Mirroring the nationwide minimum wage increase Biden is seeking as part of his $1.9 trillion relief package. His preference uh, and priority is a bipartisan package and working with members of both parties uh, to uh, come to agreement. This crisis is dire uh, and it requires uh, immediate action and we hope and expect uh, members of both parties to work together to do that. Few congressional Republicans have signed on to Biden's proposal. But House Democrats say they want to pass the president's bill as quickly as possible. It's what the people need. It's what the country needs to crush the virus, put money in the pockets of the American people, and honor our heroes. Outside with live cam, 75 degrees and sunny. What time of year is this? Can we play hooky for the rest of the day? <laughs> Yeah, the temperature just keeps going up. I, we're we're going to be in the mid-70s today, that's for sure. It's going to be a warm day. But this is our one day of sun. It, you know, it's been cloudy most of the week. We're going to get clouds again over the weekend. That storm system that brought us a little bit of rain this morning now scooting off to the east. Let's look at the radar here, and you can see rain around New Orleans, Beaumont, places like that. But we're on the back side of it, so things have cleared out nicely here in South Texas. And you look at the temperatures, there is a frontal boundary out there, so that's why you're seeing a difference in temperatures across the state. 34 in Amarillo. But we're in the 70s here in San Antonio and much of South Texas, that front right about there. And we're going to see some of that cooler air as we get into tomorrow. You look across the rest of the country, again cold, but not bitterly cold. 18 in Chicago, 10 in Minneapolis, 50 Washington, D.C. And I'll point out that San Antonio is not the warmest spot in the country, but close to it. Florida has uh, temperatures in the upper 70s right now. Uh, forecast for today, 74 degrees by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 77 for a high. Mostly clear tonight. Northwesterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, but by, say, midnight, clouds will be filling back in, and it will be a cloudy Saturday and Sunday with some rain chances mixed in. We'll have another look at that forecast in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New entertainment hitting popular streaming apps today. We have a roundup of some of the content you can expect. And the Lotta Lady Pirates finally getting a lot of attention. Winning will do that. Larry Ramirez with more on their season coming up in a few minutes in sports. American Airlines is running to an odd, running into an odd issue since less people are traveling. The company has a lot of extra wine. How they're turning this into a business opportunity after the break. Everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Costco looking to expand their services. They're going to begin testing curbside pickup for shoppers. The wholesale retailer will roll out a grocery curbside pickup program in three of their locations in Albuquerque. This will require members of Costco to spend a minimum of $100 per order. Meanwhile, aircraft developer Joby Aero Inc. They're reportedly looking to go public. According to Reuters, the company has already solicited the help of investment banks. This way they can generate interest from investors about potentially going public through a SPAC. This comes out after they inked a deal to acquire Uber's flying taxi unit. And American Airlines jumping into the wine business. The airline unveiling an online shop called Flagship Sellers. This will offer shoppers an array of wines at discounted prices. Features include wine subscriptions for $100, which includes delivery along with curated collections and individual bottles for purchase. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. 
If you are looking for something to watch this weekend that's new, you've got options. CNN's Rick Damagella has a look at a trio of originals now streaming. We're back at North America's largest hot shop to watch 10 exceptional artists push themselves to creative extremes. Blown Away is back for another round. The glass blowing art competition reality series, which bowed last summer, is back with a new group of contestants and challenges. Season two of Blown Away heats up Netflix on January 22nd. Three years ago, my sister went out one night to a party and she just never came home. The police searched for her and they never found her. Russell Tovey from Quantico and DC's Legends of Tomorrow stars in The Sister. The dark drama follows the death of a young woman and the secrets kept by Tovey's character. The four-part Hulu original series debuts January 22nd. I would have to become the creature that gets born only once every generation. Based on the New York Times best-selling novel, The White Tiger stars Priyanka Chopra Jones and follows the story of a servant in modern India betrayed by his employers who rises up to become a successful entrepreneur. The White Tiger debuts on Netflix January 22nd. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Live look outside with live cam. It just keeps getting better and better. But you know what? We kind of deserved it because we had to hunker down most of the week. It feels good, and it is Friday, right? So, you know, Friday, TGIF. <laughs> and uh, it feels good. 71 degrees right now. Uh, 50 was the low this morning. 63 and 41 are the averages. Records are 84 and 17. So, yes, it will be warm today, but we won't get anywhere near the record, which was set back in 1972. Fairly warm weekend. Tomorrow's a little cooler in the 60s, but uh, we'll certainly be warm on Sunday. Will it lead to some storms? We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Eighty degrees today, maybe. That sounds like the grass could grow, and I'm really not ready to mow grass yet. <laughs> I don't think we're there yet, David. Oh, good. Yes, yeah. that's scary. You, you know, give it like four weeks. No, <laughs> we might be. Uh, but no, it, it is warm today, but it's sort of a fleeting thing because as we get into tomorrow, cloud cover builds back in, and uh, we'll be back in the 60s tomorrow. Uh, take a look at this picture. This was sent in by Irma this morning. Love the clouds. I agree. It was pretty this morning. A little bit of rain coming down. We had some nice looking clouds and then they have shifted out and now we're left with the sun. Temperatures at this hour, 71 degrees at the airport, calm winds. Humidity is at 63%. Not too, too bad. Dew points are in the 50s this afternoon. As I mentioned, the cloud cover has pretty much gotten out of here. We're looking at mostly clear skies across Bear County. Temperature wise, 68 at Stinson, but up to 76 already in Castroville, 70 Bernie Stage and 72 in New Braunfels. 70 degrees, so Springs, 70 in Kennedy, so just about everybody is in the 70s at this point. Still a few clouds hanging on across our eastern counties, but those will also work their way out of here fairly soon. We talked about the dew points, and they're not so bad right now in the 50s. They'll actually drop off a little bit tonight as the frontal battery sort of sneaks in. But then over the weekend, we'll see the dew points build again, and it gets rather humid, especially as we get into Sunday. Dew points are going to be really high, and it's going to be humid, it may lead to a few showers and some storms late on Sunday night. We just showed you the satellite picture there, but let's zoom out some. And a lot of low clouds holding here from Dallas Fort Worth over to Abilene up to Amarillo. And that is along a frontal boundary, which is just off to our north. It's kind of slowly moving south and west. There is cooler air behind it. We're going to feel some of that. And the clouds will fill in tonight, so it turns cloudy on your Saturday. It's 47 in Abilene, 53 in Waco. And I, it won't be that cold here tomorrow, but we will again see some of that cooler air highs tomorrow, probably back in the 60s, mid 60s, if not a little bit cooler and very chilly up there in Amarillo, 34 uh, right now. But it's plenty of 70s down here across uh, South Texas. Upper level winds, that last system moving out. We've got another one here building out west right around San Francisco. That's our next area of low pressure. Uh, next storm system that will be moving our way dive south. This one takes a little bit of more of a northerly track, though, so we're not going to get the full energy from it. So our rain chances aren't just great, but they are there. Let's look at the forecast. That frontal boundary shifts southwest. Cloud cover fills in by tomorrow morning. Most of your Saturday is just cloudy, but by the end of the day, we could start to see some drizzle, some showers developing. It could become a little bit wet late on your Saturday, and that carries over 
into Sunday morning as this front moves back to the north as a warm front. Then by Sunday afternoon, just cloudy again, maybe even a few breaks in those clouds out west. And then Sunday night, that's when our next front moves in. This is around 2 a.m., so Sunday night early, early pre-dawn on Monday. We could see some showers and maybe a few storms de de uh, developing along this front, but we're going to be on the tail end of it. So our rain chances are not great here in San Antonio. And by 7 o'clock Monday morning, this is out of here. We're clearing out. Most of your work week looks pretty good. Forecast for today up around 76 and then look for those temperatures to dip down into the 60s tonight as clouds build back in overnight. Tomorrow, 65 and cloudy, a few uh, sprinkles, maybe some drizzle late. And then starting off with drizzle Sunday morning and then a 30% chance of storms, mainly Sunday night, early Monday morning. 73 Monday, 72 Tuesday, really much of next week looks pretty good. We'll get lows back in the 40s, uh, but staying fairly warm all the way throughout the seven day, guys. I'm thinking winter's over. <laughs> Go ahead. That's what scares me, though, because that means you got to mow the grass. I don't have to mow the grass. No, I know you, you have somebody to do that. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. Hey, um, the veterans, they, some of them coming off the bench, some of them playing as starters, but they're having a huge impact, even while he's young studs. They are. Right? And, and, you know, for Rudy Gay, a guy like him who used to dominate back in the day when he was a starter for the Grizzlies and the Kings, to come off the bench isn't always the easiest thing to do, but he's always been very graceful about it and he offers the Spurs a lot of bench stability for sure and one of the top 3A basketball teams is right down the road in Lytle coming up. It is game day for the Spurs who will face the rival Dallas Mavericks for the first time this season. Spurs small forward Rudy Gay is off to a nice start in 15 games off the bench this season. He's averaging 11.4 points per game. Now back in the day with Memphis, he was one of the Grizzlies top scorers. Now he's a solid role player. How has DeMar DeRozan seen Rudy grow late in his career? Maturity, um, being around a game, being around great players, being around great teams, you understand um, what you need to do to kind of, you know, um, you know, continue to reinvent yourself. Um, the last tennis league, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, we all going to go through that phase at some point, and the ones that stick around for the long haul is the ones that understand it and not adjust and, and, and give when they need to be given um, any given night. Spurs will host the Mavs at 7.30 tonight at the AT&T Center. The Mavs are 5-5 five five on the road this season after winning at Indiana Wednesday night. Luka Doncic leads Dallas into this matchup with San Antonio. He's 10th in the league, scoring 26.1 points per contest. Turning to girls high school basketball, the Lido Lady Pirates are having one heck of a regular season. They're 16-5 overall and first in District 27-3A with a perfect 9-0 record. They bring it every single game with a suffocating defense. They will press you up and down the court. I mean, they're relentless. And with five games left in the regular season, the district title is right there for the Lady Pirates taking. Well, I've been here seven years and I haven't won one here yet. So um, that was our main goal at the beginning of the season. What would make it more special is if we can go undefeated. If we could be 14 and 0 at the end and, and take that would be even more special. And to achieve that goal, Lytle will rely on its defense. They're allowing 41 points per game this season while scoring 61 themselves. The Pirates love to D up. Absolutely. We press as much as possible. We want to get them a little flustered. I'm all about the defense personally, and I try to provoke that onto my team. And I think that, like everyone says, defense wins championships, and that's what we try to put out on the court. I got some really great fast guards that have the chemistry this year. We've just been pressing teams um, the whole game, not giving up. Winners of 11 straight, Lytle is currently ranked 21st in Class 3A by the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches in Girls Basketball. It's an amazing feeling that fuels them to reach even higher. Personally, it means a lot to me, but I think as a team, We've grown a lot together from the seniors and then bringing in some underclassmen and them being able to help us get where we are. It's just, it's been amazing to be able to experience it, especially my last year. For me, it's like really special because I'm an upcoming freshman and like for me having the opportunity to play with all these seniors, it's really fun. All they need to do is win three of their final five games and Lytle Girls Basketball will take home their first district championship since 2011. It'd be a great thing to see that trophy in our case and to be able to know that we did that.
And you know, where have we heard a team is all about defense? Where have we heard Ooh, that before? Hmm. Let me think. Mm, recently. Uh, uh, yeah, so defense does it. <laughs> what's, that, what's that coach's name? <laughs> yeah. It always I makes think, play defense. Um, okay. Calls times out when the guy doesn't yeah. play defense. Let me Google Screams it. Screams at him going off yeah. the floor. He even screamed at Tim Duncan one time for not playing defense. <laughs> And they always, they're always on offense downtown, though. They're always coming up with good stuff on offense. Oh, yeah. Talk oh. about good stuff. Oh, Tomorrow is, is National that Pie is. Day. Oh, Look man. at that. Uh, oh, my yes. That is a creation a of our guest today, Monique Herrera from Cake Art. And, oh, can't wait to taste that. Now, if you're going to make a pie at home, don't do a store-bought crust, right? And this is a simple one. It's this very simple recipe. A little bit of graham cracker, butter, and brown sugar. Mix it together and bake it for about five minutes. And this is perfect for a no-bake pie. And we're also going to put her to work because she is going to be judging. We here on the SA Live staff have made our own pies. And it's a stiff competition, but uh, it's going to be a sweet one as well. So we have sweets over here, and we have baubles for your sweet over there. That's right. Well, she is a mom and, of course, a high school counselor that launched a jewelry business. Des Desi Mesa, of course, joins me. And it all started with a simple bracelet, right? Yes, the signature Bear Cub name bracelet right there. And you said your friends Yeah, liked my it? friends liked it, and then they started buying them, and then their friends saw them, and they liked them and started buying them, and then the business has just grown by word of mouth and social media since then. All right, now we're going to show you some of the newest pieces in her collection and how she can set you up with a way to make your own bracelet there at home. And a new ABC show, The Chase, is going to be coming up. And it stars Ken Jennings. We're going to be hearing from him a little bit later on. And Wild Days is back at SeaWorld. Our Jen Tobias Strusky is live to show you some of the cute animals. Plus, favorite pie. All that's coming up on SA Live. I like that one.